Hello everybody and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol reveal breakdown and today we just had the Monsters Unleashed pack revealed really really exciting I know my local scene is super hyped for this box so yeah let's uh, let's dive right into things here I haven't even scrolled through this yet so I have no idea what's being shown here uh, and it looks like they're shown off at least a couple of them if uh, if all the ones they're listing here are, are being shown that's that's kind of wild and it does actually specify here they're joining the ranks of the midnight suns so hopefully that means all four of these characters are going to be midnight suns which is going to be really really cool great boost for that affiliation uh not that they were doing it too too bad but um still really really nice to see some some more love being thrown their way it also looks like they are thrown out here that of course dracula will be leading the thralls of dracula we all expected that um, but then also member of the Cabal, so that's really interesting as well. We've confirmed at least a second affiliation for Dracula. Of course, you know, it won't be confirmed, confirmed until we still see the affiliation list, but seems to be going that way. And then we get the first stack card revealed here, and it is in Kantu, the Living Mummy. So let's scroll in just a little bit here, make that tiny bit easier to read. And uh, yeah, he's coming in as a three threat. He's got four two four defenses uh, with five stamina. So very clear weak side on the energy there. Medium move, size two. Uh, and then he's got a couple attacks here. So the first one is a Swirly. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Strike. Uh, this is a range two, five dice physical attack. After the attack is resolved, it's going to gain in power based on the damage dealt. So your standard builder there. It's got a wild push on size three or less. Always useful to have stuff like that. And then it's got the Wild Hit Mummy's Curse. After this attack is resolved, the target character gains the Hex Special Condition. Alrighty, yeah, that's that's a pretty solid trigger. Um, you know, not the most consistent thing in the world, but not the least either. So not too, too bad. And you've already got that push there. So so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, actually. Then he's got the Sever Soul attack here as well. This is a 2-cost, 6-dice Mystic attack at range 4. So you get a little bit further range with this one as well. And after this attack is resolved, if damage was dealt, this character gains a Captured Soul token. Notably, I think that is the exact same name as the Captured Soul tokens that Hela collects, so it seems like we're going to be playing a very similar mechanic here. Alright, going into superpowers, the first one is Living Death. You can spend any number of your Captured Soul tokens for each Captured Soul token spent. You may remove one special condition from yourself, remove one damage from yourself, or spend one, or sorry, gain one power. Um, that's actually really, really good. Yeah, uh, that's that's just great. Um, yeah, healing condition removal, power power gaining is going to be awesome. Um, you know, you, you start the turn, you have one soul, you spend one to, to give yourself enough to do the sever soul, and then you can gain one back by dealing damage. So yeah, that's, that's a really solid start there. Next, we have Undead Empowerment. This is a reactive, also a zero cost. While this character is attacking at the end of the modified dice step, it may use this superpower. Spend one or more captured soul tokens. For each captured soul spent this way, this character may count one skull as a wild for the remainder of the attack roll. That's really, really good. It's going to help you push through some extra damage. It's going to help you uh, get those triggers. And, you know, it's just good for dice math. So, yeah, that's that's really, really good. Notably, it is only on attacking. You can't use this defensively. Um, but still, yeah, that's a that's a super good ability to have, um, you know, just for, for spending those souls that you're trying to get anyways. So, that's pretty good. You also have Alchemical Curse of Nephris. When this character would suffer damage, reduce the amount suffered by one to a minimum one. So your standard damage reduction there, and suddenly that makes that defensive line really, really appealing, actually. I, I like that a lot. Uh, and then you have Anubis Soul Harvester. Uh, when another character is dazed or KO'd, this character gains a captured soul token. The character may have a maximum of three. So I think that's the exact same as how Hela gets them. Um, so it makes sense there. Kind of a cool synergy with the two of them if you run them together. Um, because, you know, you'll, you, they'll both benefit whenever you daze or KO something. Obviously, you're already kind of benefiting out of that, but it gives you a little bit of extra things there, so that could be interesting. Uh, and then you have the immunities to bleed, hex, and poison, so a healthy amount of immunities. Um, you know, bleed and poison usually considered kind of meh anyways. You're not too, too worried about them. Um, but for him, I could actually see poison being really, really annoying, just, you know, removing that kind of every turn being able to sever soul sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's solid. Um, and yeah, Hex is always a great condition to be immune to. Looking at the flip side here, I don't think, I'm not seeing anything different right away. The health looks the same. None of these look like they've been reworded in any way. If I am missing something, please do let me know down below. But I believe that he's the exact same on the flip side. So that's, that, that is what that is. Um, but yeah, so then we'll scroll down a little bit more. And it looks like we do have a tactics card here as well. 
probably specifically for him. It says service to Anubis. Looks like it's going to be giving you a attack. We'll read that in a moment. Uh, but it says it's a it's an active action card during encounter to the living mummy's activation. He may spend two or more power to play this card. The this character makes the attack shown above. So noticeably the two or more. So this is probably going to be one that adds dice. Um, so it's an area star zero uh, attack zero cost um, attack. It's going to be mystic. The range of the attack is equal to the number of captured soul tokens this character has. Interesting. So you can go area 3 with this or area 1 or, or whatever. Cool. Uh, add dice to the attack roll made as part of this attack equal to the amount of power spent to play this card. So I think that does include the minimum of 2 there. Uh, so it's basically just saying you, you can't throw less than 2 dice on this one. Um, but, you know, if you want to if you wanna pay 10 power into this, um, then, then this is a 10 dice area attack. And yeah, that's pretty solid. Um, after all attacks are resolved from this area attack, remove all captured soul tokens from this character, so you're going to drain your own souls afterwards, um, but that's kind of fine, because you can totally take advantage of the ability to spend your skulls, or turn your skulls into wilds for your souls, um, so you can just spend them all on the attack anyways, uh, and then you got that wild hit mummy's curse, um, to, to hand out some hexes as well, so that's really, really good as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a pretty solid card, I, I actually quite like that, as far as attack cards go, I think that's one of the more interesting ones. Um, and it, you know, works really well with his kit, so, so that's quite nice. Alright, scrolling down a little, it looks like we have Frankenstein's monster revealed here. Um, so yeah, let's get right into him. He's got four threat, he's gonna have seven stamina, he's a four, three, three defensively, um, so nothing too, too crazy here. He's got size three and a medium mover, all tracks to me. Um, seven stamina is a lot, so, so that's always nice to see. It seems like he's gonna be on the bulkier side. And his first attack here is Frank's Fists. It's going to be a range 2, 6 dice physical attack, and you're going to gain 1 no matter how much damage you do. Uh, so yeah, just uh, just a nice little gainer there. Um, good good hitting power, and it's got that wild hit push, which looks like it works on size 4 and is an omnidirectional push, so you can push through yourself or anything like that. I actually didn't check that with Encantos. Uh, Encantu does specify a way, but um, this one is, is omnidirectional, so... Uh, really, really useful there. You can, you know, throw throw, throw the big lads like Hulk and stuff to the rest of your team to just wail in on them. So really, really good there. You also have a one cost spender attack here. This actually throws less dice. It's only five dice at range two as well. But it says after this attack is resolved, if the damage was dealt, the, star the target character gains the stagger special condition. Wow, that's a actually fairly reliable stagger. I mean, obviously you have to do damage for it, but it's on a five dicer. So that is in favor most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's that's a pretty pretty solid attack right there. Uh, then you have the Monster's Fury. This is going to be a four cost six dice physical attack. It's also range two, so seeing a theme here, he's definitely going to want to be up close and personal. Uh, add dice to the attack roll equal to the amount of damage this character has. So I could potentially be adding six dice going up to a twelve dice attack that can hit like an absolute truck. And then it's got the Crit Wild Hurl after the attack is resolved if the target character is size four or less throw the target character medium and once again it's got that omnidirectional uh throw there so again you can throw towards your team you can throw towards the enemy whatever you want to do so yeah that's a that's a really solid attack you know even if you've only taken like two or three damage uh bumping that up to an eight or a nine dice attack with a throw on it that's you know not not the most consistent trigger but not that bad um and then yeah, that's, that's just a really, really solid spender. Um, this could actually, I could see this guy kind of being a bane to two models like Hulk. Um, just with that, you know, we're going to, um, we're, we're going to stagger you with this, this thick skull, and then we're going to throw you away. And, and now you basically just don't have a Hulk for the round. So that's really, really good. Continuing on, the next superpower he has here, or the first superpower rather, is charge. This is going to cost you two, and it's your standard charge, so you're going to get to move followed by an attack. Uh, yeah, these are these are good. No notes. Um, really useful for him. He's range two, so you know that that helps him close that gap. Super valuable there. Next, he has Frank's Rampage. This is a three cost. Uh, choose an interactive terrain feature size four or less within range two and throw it medium. Super can only use once per turn. So yep, standard terrain throw there. Uh, throwing it medium is nice. Gets the little bit of extra distance. Um, yeah, that that's that's also just really good. Great way to throw some extra damage out. And he's already hitting pretty hard with a uh, with a six dice builder here. So or gainer rather. Um, but very importantly, because it's a gainer, he's not going to be the most power wealthy character in the world. Um, he he's definitely going to be you know having to having to use those bigger attacks sparingly. 
um, especially if he wants to be charging and stuff like that. So uh, that is something to keep in mind here. He's definitely going to be a little power hungry. Uh, next, he has replacement parts. This is a two cost that says remove two damage from this character. This spare can only be used once per turn. That's pretty solid. Um, yeah, I mean, two, two cost to remove two, so you're one to one on the power that you gain from taking that damage. Um, yeah, that's that's just solid. Um, obviously, you know, it's um, it's more you know, something he, he's going to have to do it on his turn, so you can't, um, it's not as good as, say, reducing the damage you're taking by two, uh, but it can definitely help keep him in the fight for a while. And you can kind of stack that with just like, you know, we're going to use Monster's Fury, then we're going to use replacement parts and, and heal up because obviously we want to get those extra dice first. So that's great. And then he has immunity to shock. So there's no way you're lowering the, the attack dice here. He is going to be hitting pretty hard if he can get into your face. Um, yeah, I, I really like this so far. Looking at the flip side, uh, I'm not sure if I'm seeing anything changing right out the gate here. 433 looks the same. I was actually kind of expecting him to go down in health, but he doesn't. Um, doesn't. I'm, I'm doing real good at English today, guys. <laughs> um, didn't. Um, but yeah, I think he's the exact same. If you guys notice anything, please do let me know down below, as always. All right, scroll down just a little bit, and there's another card revealed. Lots of things in this one. Hideous Monster. This is an unaffiliated reactive card. When an enemy character targets another allied character within range 3 of an allied Frankenstein's monster with this attack, or with an attack, the allied character may spend two power to play this card. <gasps> is this what I think it is? This is what I think it is. It's another Heroes for Hire. So you're going to place Frankenstein's monster within range one of the allied character. Also, really notably, it's actually Heroes for Hire. The allied character spends the two power to play the card. Love it. Um, that's great for him because we already established he's not going to be the most power wealthy character in the world. So Frankenstein's going to place himself within one of the allied character and become the target of the attack regardless of range or line of sight. And then, this is where it's a little different. Uh, after the attack is resolved, if Frankenstein's monster is not dazed or KO'd, roll dice equal to the number of damage he has. The enemy character suffers one damage for each crit and wild rolled. If the enemy character suffers damage this way, push it small towards Frank Frankenstein's monster. Interesting. I really like this. This, I mean, I'm a sucker for Heroes for Hire and just bodyguard effects in general, so I was going to like this no matter what great way to bring frankenstein into the fight great way to make your opponent really scared with their low health models to try to punch anyone because you just boom frankenstein's here and i'm i'm counter striking you maybe frankenstein already has you know one or two damage on him so there's already a chance even if you don't do damage to him and then you do one or two more and and suddenly hey your activation's over because we hit you back with you know a single critical or something like that um also you know if you if you don't quite get the damage you need you are mainly actually using this for the bodyguard ability but they were attacking from a further range you bring them in now you activate with frankenstein and you just go to town so yeah this is this is great i i really like this card next we also have werewolf by night oh boy lots of reveals my throat is gonna be very dead after this one but uh yeah let's let's jump right into him here so this is a five threat I'm pretty sure we've actually already seen at least the front side of this card again, but we'll go over it again for anyone who missed it. So he's coming in with 442 defensively, 7 stamina, 5 threat, medium move, and size 3. He's got the Savage Slash. This is a 6 dice range 3 physical attack. You're going to gain power based on the damage dealt. Standard builder there. After this attack is resolved, if damage was dealt, you'll hand out the bleed. So you do have to deal damage for that, but otherwise no triggers or anything like that. And you got the Wild Leap before damage is dealt. Place this character within one of the target character. Notably, just like the ambush triggers on a lot of other characters, this is not optional. So if you were trying to keep your distance, you actually don't want this sometimes. Uh, but a lot of the time, this will be great to let you close the distance and maybe move in for a spender or some other things. So still, yeah, really, really useful and great way for just kind of moving around the map. You also have a lethal lycanthrope here. This is a three cost spender. It's going to be seven dice physical at range two. So a little bit closer range. Again, you can leap in for this. After the attack is resolved, if the target character is size three or less, you may throw it away small. Um, so that's that's nice to have and then hit curse of the wolf after the die is resolved the target character gains the bleed and hex special conditions that's only on a hit so you're very very likely to be getting that um and you know you also have that throw which is guaranteed so that's really really nice as well um yeah that's that's actually just really really good so no quite solid there next he has the pounce superpower he throws himself small doesn't suffer damage uh because he's a size three this can hit relatively hard it's gonna be costing him three power so Gives him a little bit of mobility, gives him a little bit of extra damage. Always good to have that. He's got Unearthly Howl. This is a two cost. Choose an enemy character within three of this character. 
roll four dice. The chosen character loses power equal to the number of crits, wilds, and hit results, so 50% on average you're going to be hitting two. Additionally, for each skull you roll, the chosen character gains one of the following special conditions, slow or root. A, a character can only be affected by the superpower once per turn, but notably the superpower can be used more than once. So if you're close enough to multiple enemy characters and you want to just be able to zap a bunch of power from a bunch of them and maybe hand out some conditions, uh, you can you can do this you know as as many times as you have the power to do. So that's really really nice there. Yeah, I actually really like the superpower the more that I'm thinking about that. Um, so yeah, that's really really cool. Next, you have Midnight Massacre here. This is a three cost. After an attack against this character is resolved, it may use the superpower. Another one of my favorite types of abilities here. If the attacker is within range three, this character may make a savage slash attack targeting the attacker. The superpower can be used only once per turn. This is great for a couple reasons. Um, obviously, crackbacks are always good. Crackbacks that hand out bleed are even better because especially if it's the end of their activation, um, you know, even if you don't take them down with the attack, they're taking another damage for that bleed. So they're dealing with that. Um, and then, uh, you also have that wild leap, so you can use this to, to zap over to them, whether that's to, you know, you know, get away from some other enemy characters, put yourself on a point or something like that. Maybe they, maybe they didn't try to flip the point yet, uh, on a, on a pay to flip and suddenly now they have another model contesting it. So, um, yeah, potentially some really rude things you could do with that. I'm also just a sucker for crackbacks. Uh, and then next he has healing factor, which, you know, still good. Exceptional healing is not a thing anymore, but healing factor is still good. And on a health pool like this, the new healing card is actually probably reasonably solid for him as well. So yeah, that's, that's always nice to have. Going to his flip side here, uh, does anything change? Looks to be the same to me. He has seven stamina on the front as well, right? Yeah, he did. Uh, so I think he is identical on the flip side. I think that's three for three so far being the exact same on the flip. Um, as always, if I'm missing anything, please do let me know. All right, tiny bit more scrolling down and we hit phases of the moon. I, I heard a few things about this card. This sounds really, really cool. So I'm excited to, to see what this actually does. It is unaffiliated reactive at the start of the activation phase where Wolf by Night may play this card. So timing is going to be before any anything activates. So you do have to know if you're doing this um, before the first activation. Always relevant, especially if you don't have priority. Choose one of the following effects. New Moon, this character must spend one power before using the Midnight Massacre superpower, uh, which I want to say is his crackback. Yeah, it is. Um, while this character is defending, if it is holding or contesting an objective token, it may reroll one die in its defense roll for each special condition the attacking character has. So, um, trying to wrap my head around this. So it makes your crackback more expensive. That goes up to a four cost crackback. That's a downside. However, when you're defending, if you're holding or contesting objectives, you get a reroll for each special condition the attacker has. Interesting. So that does synergize kind of nicely with his ability to hand out uh, conditions on his uh, Unearthly Howl here, uh, as well as the, the Curse of the Wolf and then, you know, the bleed from his Savage Slash. Uh, so by himself, with absolutely no support, I think he can do four conditions. So that's four defensive rerolls. That's not bad. Um, I don't know if that's worth putting your crackback up to a four cost, but I guess because you're making yourself harder to kill, uh, it kind of makes sense that they, they want to make it less punishing to be going into him. Um, still, that almost kind of feels neutral to me. The other one here is Full Moon. You cannot interact with, contest, or hold extracts, so you're gonna have to be careful when you play this one. However, while you're attacking, you may reroll one die in your attack roll for each special condition the target has. So, this is interesting. Yeah, so you lose the ability to play objectives completely, but, you know, again, by himself, he can technically get up to four offensive rerolls. If you're playing some other models and handing out conditions, obviously that, that gets better. Uh, same for the, the New Moon one there as well. Um, mind you, he, he doesn't go above four dice, so that rarely will matter if you're going above four, but it'll become more consistent and that sort of thing. So, yeah, um, those are both really interesting. I think you're going to have to be careful with when you play this card. You're going to have to have a plan. Um, the, the New Moon one, I think, might be a little better overall if you're trying to play this in the early game. Uh, bumping up the Midnight Massacre is is going to be unfortunate, but um, the the defensive rerolls I think will give you a little bit more mileage as the game goes on. Uh, while while Full Moon is going to be really good for that kind of late game, um, you you need to you need to pop this card and uh, just like take a model out because that model is going to you know score a bunch of points or or something like that. Um, so yeah, you got to be careful with which one you're doing and what what timing you're using on playing this because obviously not being able to play objectives is a big deal 
uh, and this card does remain in effect for the entire game once you play it, so you're going to have to be careful with that. Um, but yeah, I think for a card that stays in play the entire game, this is this is probably a reasonably fair card. Um, it's definitely interesting. I'm going to hesitate on how good I think this is, because I think we're going to have to see it in play, and we're going to have to see the situations where both sides of it are good. I might be too attached to the crackback to, to use the new moon side of it very much, um, but I think that's probably the stronger side. Uh, versus full moon as just like a you know late game you just need to kill something is still a really solid effect so i'm curious to see how this one's going to play once it actually kind of hits the table all right scrolling just a little bit further we do have dracula revealed here as well uh, once again i think we've looked at the front side of his card before but we're going to go over it again for anyone who hasn't uh, so he's coming in with four three four defensively seven uh, stamina and five threat size three medium mover actually very comparable to werewolf by night here he's got his ancestral blade this is a range to seven dice attack physical after the attack is resolved you're going to gain power based on the damage dealt and you got the hit curse of shadows to give one of the following special conditions note that it's not for each hit so you're only going to be able to give it one at a time but you do have four different conditions you can throw it here which is quite solid you also have Blood Feast, which is a 1 cost, 6 dice, range 2 physical attack. This is after the attack is resolved, you remove 1 damage from yourself for each damage dealt, so you're going to heal up a little bit off of this as well. And after the attack is resolved, the target character gains the Bleed special condition, no triggers or anything like that, so that's always nice for consistency. Next, you've got Fury of the Vampire. This is a 4 cost, 8 dice, range 3 mystic attack. If the target character has the bleed special condition, so immediately some synergy with your other two attacks here, you may reroll any number of attack dice. Always good to have that. That's kind of, you know, blades thing there. And then after this attack is resolved, if the target character is size four or less, you may throw it away medium. So yeah, guaranteed throw, no triggers, anything like that. Always really, really good to have. Next, he has Hypnotic Stare here. This is a two cost active superpower. Choose an enemy character within range three. Advance the chosen character small. This superpower can be used only once per turn. So your standard bow here, um, yeah, that's just good. <laughs> it turns out those are really good. Um, so yeah, that's always nice to have. He's also got his reactive eternal hunger. Uh, this is a, a range or a two cost rather. Uh, after an attack against this character is resolved, it may use the superpower. If the attacker is within three, you get to crack back. Uh, you get to use any of your attacks really interestingly. So you know you could even do the one that's going to throw them away or something like that. Potentially really really rude. Um, obviously you got to still pay the power for it, but. Yeah, um, that's that's just really good. You could heal up off of off of Blood Feast um, or, or Ancestral Blade. So yeah, that's uh, that's super useful. Obviously, keep in mind that while this specifies within three, the only attack of yours that's actually at range three here is at your spender here. Uh, so you're gonna have to keep that in mind as well. Next, he has his shape shifting ability here. This is a one cost reactive. When he begins a move during his activation, uh, move action to be clear, he may use the superpower. If he does, choose one of the following effects to resolve before moving. So basically, you can give yourself a flight with the bat, you can make your speed long with the wolf, or you can go mist, drop all objective tokens, remove all special conditions, and up to two damage from this character. So you get to you get to heal up a little bit, but of course you drop any objectives that you're holding on to. Um, still just some extra healing on top of your, your blood feast and stuff like that is pretty solid. Uh, notably though, he doesn't have any mobility outside of this, so he's going to be relying on stuff like Hypnotic Stare to be able to bring things into range for him to punch them. Uh, otherwise he's going to be taking some move actions, which, you know, he doesn't hate because he can use that to heal, so that's, that's not always a bad thing, uh, but it is just worth considering. He also has Unholy Vampiric Immortality at the end of this character's activation. It gains one power and removes one damage from itself for each other character within three of it, and has the Bleed special condition. So again, just slightly upgraded version of Blade's superpower that does very similar things. Um, so yeah, we, we've already seen this one before, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, going into his flip side, which I don't think we've seen yet, I believe this is the exact same. It is still a 7 dice builder. Yeah, I will say 7 dice range 2 um, builder is really really good um so yeah five threat uh obviously the, the the range is kind of the downside of that and why it's not like you know a six dice or something like that if it was a range three it would probably have been uh been a six dice um but you know building and and potentially throwing out a condition as well is is really really solid um so yeah he, he definitely hits hard once he gets there um he just doesn't have quite very much in the way of mobility to get there uh, I think he will obviously synergize really well with Blade, so running him in Midnight Suns where you can kind of solve that problem with the bump in the night is potentially quite good. 
All right, next up we have a card. I know a lot of people are very, very excited about myself included. This is the Thralls of Dracula, which I believe, yeah, that is the leadership. So this is an unaffiliated reactive card when this is included in your squad. If your squad is unaffiliated and includes Dracula, you may now play this card. Uh, your squad is now using this leadership. Notably, it does not mention that this doesn't take one of your card slots, so this is going to eat one of your five slots. But still, um, it, it is his leadership, so it is the Bloodlust leadership. Once per turn during an allied character's activation, it may pay one power and choose an enemy character within range two. The chosen enemy character gains the Bleed special condition. If they already had the Bleed special condition, you may remove a damage from yourself instead. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I I like that a lot. That's obviously going to have some natural synergies with Blade. Um, there's also going to be some, a, a, probably a fair number of characters that can benefit from that uh, a fair bit, just having access to some healing, throwing out some conditions, so characters that benefit from, from characters being conditioned down. We already see a little bit of that with some of the monsters that were released in this box as well. So yeah, that's that's really, really cool. Um, that's, that's a reasonably solid leadership, I think. But that is going to do it for this panel to play. Lots of stuff revealed here. I hope you guys are excited as I am. Uh, definitely let me know down below what you guys think on all of these characters. I think they're really, really cool. Uh, I'm definitely excited to put all these guys on the table. And finding out that they're all most likely going to be in the Midnight Suns, except for Dracula, of course, uh, is really, really exciting. That's, that's obviously um, something, you know, I, I'm a big Midnight Suns fan, so I'm super happy to see them getting getting a little bit of love here and um you know dracula seems really really interesting i'm curious to see who's going to be in his affiliation and how that's going to work so i'm definitely looking forward to that but uh definitely leave your thoughts down below uh that is going to do it for me for this one though so i hope you guys enjoyed this little breakdown here um if you did please do drop a like down below subscribe if you're new to the channel we do discussion focused content and things like that during the weekdays as well as other reveals when things come up then we also got battle reports on the weekends so if you're a fan of any of that stuff feel free to jump on in but that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Peace.